Southern Daily Echo, Southampton and Hampshire's biggest regional newspaper. However, with other regional newspapers shutting down, more and more people are reading news online, and with the introduction of other new media technology, it begs the question, how much longer can our local papers survive, especially during the recent recession? I met with Ian Murray, the editor of the Daily Echo, to hear his views on the future of regional newspapers. Every newspaper group has been affected by the recession. Well, every company has been really affected by the recession. What it has really done is that it accelerated the changes that were taking place in newsrooms throughout the country. We've, we've been facing a lot of pressures from the internet anyway. And let's first of all dispel one of the myths. People say that, oh, well, the internet's come along, that's going to destroy local newspapers and destroy newspapers. People don't turn to that anymore. There's more advertising now on the, new, in, on the net than there is on TV, for instance, etc. The answer to that is, well, we are the web as well. And when people want to find local news and information, they go to the brands they trust. And around here, it's quite simple, it's us and the BBC. Any editor or any newspaper manager that basically says, oh, it's made no difference, it has made a tremendous difference um, to it. You know, young expectations of um, generations that are coming through who aren't used to reading newspapers in the past, it was quite simple. We would get people like yourselves to actually buy the newspaper when you reach a certain point in your life because you buy into the community so therefore you buy into your local newspaper when you want a job, a car, a school for your kids, all those kind of things. You want to know why it is that they're building houses on the village green or why you're having to pay so much tax and that. So when you buy into a community, you buy into the local regional newspapers to find out what's going on. Your generation may not do that. The generation above you may not do that because you're used to getting all your information on the internet, through the radio, now through Twitter and all those kind of things. So what we found is a lot of pressure on that and circulations have dropped all around. What we're finding though is that those papers that have adapted quickly, those papers that have said, well okay, right, we've got to evolve now. In the same way as we evolved when cable TV came along, when broadband came along, when television came along, when radio came along, when the national papers came along, and all these have done, we've been around for 120 years and all these things have happened. Every time it's happened, someone said, that's the end of your paper, isn't it? And it hasn't happened yet, kind of thing. What's happened is we've had to adapt, look, decide, well, what they probably want is they want more comment, they want more opinion, they want the news behind the news kind of thing. A classic example is that sales of our pink, our sports pink on a Saturday, have actually risen. They've actually risen this year because we've changed the format, we've got more opinion, we've got more people writing in it, we've got, we've got more kind of like just not who's kicked the ball to who and who won the match. They know that. So we've actually changed the shift on that and we've seen a growth in our, in our sales on that. So the way that we actually pass it up and, and pass on the news, it, it does change. Not always for the better. The arrival of 24-hour rolling news is not the most brilliant of things because basically this pressure, pressure, pressure to break the news first basically does lead to some pretty awful news coverage, some pretty awful decisions that are made to basically shove it up there quick and, and we'll find out whether it's true and accurate and fair and balanced later kind of thing. So there's a bit of rolling back from that. The, 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 when the, the internet really began to take off a few years ago, it was a kind of case of, well, as soon as you get a sniff of any kind of like story, you should put it up onto the internet. You know, this story, we've heard that so-and-so is breaking. But very quickly what we found was that, was that visitors to the, the website was, it was in, just as important to them as readers of the paper that we were telling them something that was accurate, that it was fair, it was balanced. And if we put up there something saying, you know, sort of like smoke scene, smoke scene rising over Shirley could be a big fire, we'll tell you about it later. Then when they came back later and we said, oh, actually, it was just a bit of fog, because they just say, oh, come on, Echo. We expect better of you from this. So what we found is this kind of like Twitter effect of, you know, so quickly tell you something. And, oh, what, by the way, I'm doing... Really, it doesn't do your credibility any good. So Joe Public, basically, are, they're quite rational. And, they're, and the way that what kind of news is important to them has remained the same. You know, I mean, OK, we could look at it and say, well, too many people these days are interested in X Factor. Not, not enough are interested in the fact that we happen to be at war kind of thing. Um, and the, uh, but if you go back a hundred years and you look at, look at the, the popular papers in London around that kind of time, people were still interested in the kind of X factor of their day. They were still interested in the celebrities of their day. Nothing really changes. It's the way we pass it up. The big questions for us are, are, as I mentioned beforehand, how much we put on the internet, when we put it on the internet, 
do we um, say give you a flavour and a taste and say it was more in the paper? It's 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 how we basically decide to section it all up and and what kind of things will grip you. And certainly there's different kind of news on the website, different kind of photographs and images we feel we can put on the website that we can't put in a family newspaper. You know, every every kind of leap in technology, um, it's a case of oh that'll be great because that will buy you more time to do things. You know, when the computers arrived and the new, it was always a, all that happened was they said right fine well you can do more faster, we can get that out to press faster. I mean in the last year we've actually gone to printing overnight so that the Daily Echo itself now appears alongside the Sun, the Mirror, in the news agents first thing in the morning. Now people still refer to us as the Evening Echo. It's not, we're not, we've been the Daily Echo for a long time actually, but a lot of people still think that we're going to arrive in the shops around tea time, and in fact we're there at breakfast, and that, so that, that's a kind of like a, a not very subtle change that's basically done. So we, we are pushed around by the pressures of, 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 of technology and the, the way that things are what they can basically do. Um, when the internet came along, we all thought that we've got to buy hugely expensive systems to put stuff on the internet. When we decided we've got to put video on, we, we, you know, we were told, oh, you've got to have these massive cameras like the BBC and Meridian have, and you guys are carrying. We've got to carry this. In fact, our reporters carry quite small cameras, and most, if not all of them, are actually carrying little flip cameras. These kind of ones that you just flip out, just take a head and sort of just plug it straight into the computer, download a quick interview, and onto the website and that kind of thing, which, you know, I've seen them advertised this week for 25 quid. So, you know, we do react to that. It's actually made our life a lot easier in some ways, but the actual skill and the art and knowing what makes a good story and taking all that information and actually honing it down and actually then presenting it in a fair, balanced, accurate but readable way is still there at the heart of it all. In 10 years time, hey, if I could tell you exactly what's going to happen in 10 years time, I wouldn't be sat here, much as I enjoy it, I would actually be running companies. So. We're still going to be around for a long time, we've just got to find our way to adjust now, and that's what we're doing.